I'm, I'm very happy and、uh, feel privileged、uh, to have the opportunity to share、uh, the industrial internet reference architecture and, uh, uh, the, and also the idea behind、uh, why we、uh, want to create uh, this uh, reference architecture.、Um, so, uh, thank you, uh, Kathy, for the introduction. So, I'm going to skip the rest of this and move on. Uh, to the content. So,、uh, in the next uh, uh, 30 uh, minutes and so, I would like to um, um,、uh, share the ideas、uh, with you about、um, why we want to create this、uh, reference architecture, what it's for, and what objective it's trying to achieve, and how does it relate to the other IC uh, 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 technology framework. Uh, including those,、uh, uh, the industrial internet security framework and industrial internet、uh, connectivity framework. And uh, I think, uh, uh, I believe, you know,、um, a number of speakers will be presenting the details of those frameworks、uh, uh, within this session today.、Um, the industrial internet of things and actually is a pretty, a sim a pretty simple idea, and、um, uh, why it applies to different uh, uh, areas, including smart cities and、uh, in various industrial verticals, they share a pretty common objective. Now,、uh, what is industrial internet of things? You know, different folks have different interpretations, and、uh, the, our version here is essentially is the extension of the internet boundaries. Uh, to the new frontiers, to the things, to the objects. And、uh, it, as far as the industrial internet of things concerns, we are seeking to connect、uh, to the objects, machines, devices, with the、uh, information system that we have today, with、uh, the business process, and with the people who are using it or managing it.、Um, the idea behind this connectivity is to Be able to apply advanced analytic to the vast amount of data we collected from this connected machine, and to gain a new level of insights into the operational state of the machines, and a new ability to use these insights to enable intelligent、uh, industrial operations to optimize our operations and assets, and by which we want to bring about a transformation of business outcomes. And social values. So, with that common objective,、uh, we can see the IoT as one、um, area of the general IoT. Um, um,、uh, the the is kind of part, you know, commonly uh, uh, recognized as a consumer IoT. But if we look at industrial IoT,、um, we can see that it can be widely applicable、uh, to, you know, for example,、um, uh, from agriculture to mining. Uh, to manufacturing, all the way to even to,、uh, for example,、uh, smart retails, and with this a broad applicability, it come with、uh, great impacts, and it also come with、uh, complexity and diversities.、Um, the question is, how do、um, how do we address this uh, uh, complexity, or how do we address the challenges and, and bring about by the complexity and diversities? Now. To answer that question, you know, let's examine、uh, what would be the common technology challenges in implementing the industrial Internet of Things systems. Now, different folks come from different background with different experience. When you look at、uh, these questions, so you, clearly you're going to come up with a different set of、um, uh, challenges. And here, just my take here、uh, as you know, a background for discussion. For example, security and privacy has been raised in many, many. Uh, 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 forums as one of the key challenges in implementing industrial Internet of Things systems, interoperabilities, and obviously safeties. Now we're no longer dealing with a pure、uh, information system. We're dealing with real assets, real machines, and and、uh, there's a great safety concerns when we、um, um, uh, include those uh, uh, systems into the uh, uh, internet.、Um, And obviously,、uh, we're dealing with industrial system as well.、Um, uh, for for there's a much stronger requirement on reliability and resilience of the system because if we're not careful,、uh, they could bring a great impact to our lives. And and、um, so so this is a different aspect as a challenge. ITOT convergence has been talked about uh, uh, all over the place. I, I don't need to、uh, elaborate on that. And finally, because IoT is seeking to Uh, enable in intelligent operations to enable、um, uh, optimization of our assets, 
And that's a building on the new insight we gain from uh, the analytic applied on the data. And however, uh, we, we're going to face uh, uh, great challenges, how to enable uh, greater data sharing, uh, overcome the existing barrier either in the technology or in the value or business model to enable that kind of analytic to obtain that kind of uh, um, uh, uh, insight to enable what we want to achieve. So this is a, num a number of these uh, common uh, challenges I, I, you know, um, I can see. The question is, how do we solve these shared challenges? Um, I see, um, um, start looking at these questions, you know, uh, uh, at the very beginning when, when, it's, uh, 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 when it was created. Right, if we look at IoT systems, uh, they tend to be a large scale, heterogeneous, and distributed system are uh, very often uh, built with multi-vendor uh, building blocks. Now, the question is, when we look at IoT system from sector to sectors, from industrial system to smart cities to even to retails, for example, uh, we we like to ask the question: Are these shared systems? Are these systems share any uh, 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 common system requirements, characteristics, and architectural concerns and patterns? Because we know they share common challenges, but in order to meet these challenges, is there any other uh, uh, shared characteristic we can uh, look at? And and then can these uh, common shared, uh, uh, these common uh, requirements, characteristic, uh, architecture patterns can be abstracted out and generalized into common architecture descriptions. And uh, so, so the idea is that if we can um, uh, achieve what we, if the answer to these two questions is yes, then I think uh, it could enable us to um, uh, create uh, shared technologies and uh, shared solutions reusable across industrial verticals. So the idea is that to, uh, to examine these questions and, and provide, um, uh, seeking to provide a reference architecture for industrial internet of things and as an architecture template and methodologies, and to be uh, to enable applications within and across various industrial verticals. So, um, so we, we um, so what is the uh, outcome of this uh, exercise? Uh, essentially, uh, we want to derive a set of common architecture requirements, characteristics, and patterns, and we want to. Um, um, provide common architecture concept of vocabularies for consistent communications and designs and uh, uh, create a foundation to identify interoperability requirements. Uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, uh, slides we just uh, talked about, you know, identifying interoperability as uh, key challenges uh, across the uh, verticals. And, but how to resolve these uh, interoperability uh, challenges? And uh, we cannot really talk about interoperability without knowing what is interacting, uh, interoperating with what, right? So in reference architecture, we provide such a foundation to even to start that conversation. And um, so if we can come up with a common architectures or common reference architectures across, across the uh, uh, industrial verticals, it will make it a lot easier uh, to uh, create an open ecosystem we are much bigger market and enable and spur um, uh, active uh, um, uh, innovations. So, the reference architecture uh, we see, you know, we see there's two type of uh, user for it. Number one, uh, for vendors to build in the interoperable and reusable market fitting system building blocks. Um, you know, uh, the reference architecture that is horizontal and open will enable these vendors building. Uh, system building block or solutions that has a much broader market space. And then for implementer uh, to have a good starting point uh, for design and also for them to have um, uh, um, uh, ready to deploy or ready to integrate system building blocks off uh, from the market. So at the end, by achieving these, uh, we seek to reduce the effort and risk and, and lower the cost and shorter time uh, to value for implementing 
uh, safe and secure and reliable IoT systems. So for that background, we have worked, uh, one IC was first a startup, we debated and examined and explored all these questions and tried to find answers to those questions. The outcome of this exploration and discussion and deliveries uh, is captured uh, in this, uh, what we call industrial internet reference architecture as a technical report. It's not just a simple white paper, um, informative, and uh, it's not a, a technical uh, a specification either. Uh, is we are not seeking for compliance, for example. We just want to seek the uh, goal of building consensus on key architecture concepts and also want to raise awareness on important architectural concerns uh, in when we build an IoT systems. And on top of that, on top of the foundation, we want to provide a high level guidance on how to address these concerns and present important ideas uh, correctly and clearly so it can be uh, accessible and useful for practitioners when they build um, uh, IoT systems. So uh, we published the first version of the reference architecture around um, uh, June uh, 2015, and just you know, a couple of months ago, we uh, published a new revision uh, to that document. And the, um, this is just a few bullet items capturing, uh, what, highlighting what are the new changes uh, to the uh, uh, original version. Essentially, we want to uh, update uh, the document to reflect new technology and concept applications uh, as we since gained uh, uh, after the first publication. Obviously, we, I see as Kathy uh, just uh, described, we have a large number of uh, test beds, and uh, the test bed since uh, has been uh, 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 aligned or adapt the reference architectures as the, the starting point when design and their test bed systems. And from that exercise, we have gained a lot of feedback from them. And uh, secondly, we also want to represent the latest thinking of the IC and IoT community that have developed since the first publication of the uh, reference architecture. We also want to make the, uh, uh, the document a lot more accessible and, and by clarifying existing concepts and models, and we, at the end, we want to see the goal to uh, provide a practical and implementable deliverable to the community. So uh, the audience of the reference architecture is for two uh, type um, uh, on a high level. Uh, it's intended for system and component architects who design or build uh, system components, technology and solutions. Uh, within the vendors uh, or implementer communities. We also seek to make the document accessible, for, uh, accessible to uh, business decision makers and others who care about how do we, um, 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 uh, uh, through the, uh, the journey of uh, the convergence of operation technology and information technology, one we uh, 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 trying to achieve uh, uh, the, uh, the promised benefit of IoT. Now we get into a little bit details of the reference architecture. Uh, first of all, it's a standard base a reference architecture. Uh, you take um, the ISO IEC IEEE 42010 2011 architecture description as its uh, starting point. Uh, we adapt a number of uh, concepts and modeling uh, relationship from that uh, uh, standard. Uh, for example, um, we uh, abstract, you know, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the stakeholders' concerns and viewpoint. Uh, concepts and their relationship, and also um, use that as a concern identification, evaluation, and resolution model to identify and vary and address concerns uh, concerning uh, architectures and capturing those outcomes as the representation of the uh, architectures. The idea is to use this uh, reference of ar architecture framework and associate with the artifact that we created by applying it to the IoT environments as the starting point and then allow us uh, architects or system designers use it as a starting point to design the system through extension, enrichment, and development for their specific 
IoT systems based on their business requirements and technical requirements. And we also want to see feedback through the exercise to continue to improve the reference architectures. So uh, what is the reference architecture? Um, at the first thing first, it actually is a methodology about how to come about a uh, reference architect uh, a concrete uh, architecture for uh, IoT system. It's a business value driven methodology. We use the framework that I just described to identify the main concerns in IoT system, in IoT system architectures, classify them into four different major categories by their nature. So we can examine these concerns systematically, and hopefully we can come up with systematic solution as well. So the four category of concern we come up with is concern about business, usage, and functional, and implementation. The ideas of this methodology is that we should start from the business value perspective when we consider building a reference, uh, building an IoT system. And we should use best business vision and business objective as our uh, guiding principles when we consider whether or not or how to build an IoT system. And from the business, when we resolve uh, those concerns, we use that as a guidance to guide the next level of development of architecture. We want to ask the questions, how the system is supposed to be used in order to deliver the business values, right? And then we go down to the next level. Once we have a clear understanding how the system is to be used, we want to ask, how can we enable those usage by providing a certain set of functions? What are those functional components look like? And then when we understand how those functional components look like and how do they interact with each other in order to support the usage, how do we implement those uh, functional um, uh, um, um, components? How are they related to each other in a concrete network topology, for example? So it's uh, layer by layer deliberations from business to usage to functional to implementation. At the same time, we are not seeking to create a waterfall process we want to enable iterative um, uh, exercise when we address those concerns and provide a short uh, feedback loop uh, back uh, uh, to the top level as well. So to summarize, it's a business value driven methodology for architecting an IoT system. And uh, so, so the idea is that now we have the viewpoints capturing the architectural concerns starting from the business value perspective and we identify those concerns specific to a particular system we want to build and then we try to resolve those issues, provide solutions uh, to resolve those issues. Through the exercise we're going to create uh, many artifacts, many of them based on existing or new models and when we capture those models, those models will form the so-called business view or usage view depend on what the model, uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, um, concerns they are trying to address. The totality of these uh, outcomes will constitute the uh, uh, concrete uh, architecture for an IoT system. So it's a concern resolution driven architecture template for us to go through the exercise for the purpose of creating an implementable IoT system architecture. Now, the, the reference architecture not only provide the framework for analyzed concerns, provide a template to resolve those concerns, we also go one step further to ask the question, for example, in a generic IoT system, what would be the common functional components we must consider for a particular systems. The idea is not seeking, say, everyone who implement an IoT system must provide those function block. Rather, we want to ensure when we consider or designing a system, we don't by neglection uh, omitting some important functions. And it's, it's, in other words, we want to use this as a starting point to make sure 
we design a system that will include the necessary function for the IoT system to deliver the uh, required functional components for the uh, uh, system. Um, we ought for that, so we identify four major, well, actually, five major functional domain, the control domain encompass the functional uh, aspect with the machines, with the control systems, with the um, uh, 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 devices uh, concerning the, control, uh, the loop of uh, sensing, control, and actuation. And then we want to address the uh, uh, requirements about once we connect those systems, how, how do we manage them, right? How do we manage connect, connections? How do we manage the um, uh, 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 um, uh, security and, and such? And then we put the information uh, function domain in the center of the system because we realize that IoT system, the core idea of IoT system is, will be able, is, is to be able to collect data from the machines to be able to analyze them, to gain insight, so we can apply the insight back to our operation, back to our business processes. So on the right-hand side of the middle layer, we have the application. That is the functional block. Take the insight from the analytic and apply it back to the operation to optimize your operations. And then we want to make sure uh, the optimization is end-to-end. -end. So we want to make sure that the business system will be connected as part of the system. Uh, the IoT system as well. At the same time, uh, we recognize that a number of other functions uh, is cross-cutting uh, 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 to these uh, um, functional domains. For example, connectivity. We not only need to connect to the devices, we need to connect uh, up different functional components as well. And data management, in order to enable um, uh, analytic data need to flow through many different functional uh, 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 domains as well. Uh, on top of these cross fun uh, on top of these functional domain and cross cutting functions, we also identify a number of what we call system characteristics that are emerging property from the system is bigger than the simple sum of the components. For example, think about security as one of the emerging property of the system. Um, if we look at the security of a system. A system can only be as secure as its weakest link, right? And we can ensure the security for each component if the interaction of the component themselves are not secure, then the whole system is insecure. And the same idea applies to other aspects as well, to, for example, to safety, to resilience of the system, uh, to uh, reliability, um, and, and so forth. And uh, the, I, I believe you know, our, 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 um, uh, the speaker, uh, Serene, will have a, uh, a detailed discussion on the trustworthiness of uh, this uh, system characteristic uh, in his session. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then, um, uh, one step further, we not only provide you know, the methodology and template and some comprehensive system anal analysis, we also provide some practical architecture patterns um, we continue to add to this uh, 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 repository of uh, architect patterns as you know, uh, a starting point for architects to choose, examine, choose, to jumpstart their design uh, conceptions. And again, I want to reemphasize the idea that the industrial internet reference architecture is seek broad capability across the industrial verticals. And uh, we actually, uh, when we design uh, this uh, uh, reference architecture, we look across the industrial verticals uh, um, to attract their commonalities. The idea is to um, um, uh, have a common starting point uh, to enable um, um, each sector's use as a foundation to extend it, to enrich it, to specialize it. Uh, for their um, uh, implementation based on their requirements. Finally, um, we talk about the emerging property of systems. We also raise this uh, awareness in order to um, make sure that these uh, system characteristics meet our uh, requirements. We not only need to look into how do we 
engineering the system, we also need to look at how the system get deployed, operated. And we need to also have assurance programs to make sure at the end of the day, the system deliver the properties or system characteristics that we required. So looking forward, uh, what, we're going to, uh, what we see uh, we'll be doing, continue the path for uh, impro uh, providing practical and, and implementable uh, reference architecture for the industrials. So first of all, we're going to continue our effort in enrich the architecture patterns, uh, not only on the implementation viewpoint, but also in other viewpoint as well. And continue to provide concrete example application of IRA um, uh, um, uh, standard templates for uh, representing the patterns for each of these viewpoints, so make it a lot easier to, to include new uh, architecture patterns. And then we want to take the general reference architecture and work with vertical experts, uh, domain experts, to, uh, to specialize the reference architecture for the specific uh, sectors so that one of the specific sectors, architects, want to implement an IoT system, they have a higher starting point to consider their architectures. We also consider how to expand, exp, uh, expand our descriptions uh, 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 on the control domain as one of the functional domains to reflect how do we enable the vast amount of brownfield systems and enable them to take the advantage of IoT and, and also uh, 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 provide a path uh, to the future uh, uh, um, technology developments. And finally, we want to ex uh, expand our, our guidance on how to create views from each of these viewpoints with concrete examples, um, uh, um, taking lessons uh, or, or practice, uh, best practice from our test bed uh, um, uh, activities. So this is just a page or summary of what the new version of IIA has bring about uh, that we published a couple of months ago. I don't need to go through the details here, and I think that that will be shared uh, publicly. And so, uh, please, you know, look it up if you uh, want to see a summary of the changes. So uh, this is my summary. I I think I probably spill over the time a little bit, and um, so just quickly to summarize, um, the IRA, uh, the Industrial Internet Reference Architecture, is a standard-based common architecture template and methodology for designing interoperable IoT system within or across industrial verticals. It's a business value driven, um, highlighting important IoT system characteristics, um, uh, uh, safety, security, privacy is among those. And uh, it's also serves as a base for identifying interoperability requirements and furthermore uh, solutions to those uh, interoperability requirements. It also provides a foundation for enabling and spurring innovation in an open ecosystem with a much larger market uh, environment. It's for vendors to build marketing, market fitting, I have misspelling here, market fitting, reusable products and services for a large market sector, and also for implementer to build IoT system and reduce effort and cost, lower risk, and shorter time to market. Uh, thank you very much.